So it really is going to be down to how he manages his squad. And uh, Liverpool, Spencer, they've perhaps spent uh, the most money out of any Premier League team. Yeah, they've got to go to, they've got to go and win at places like Villa if they want to get up. But they've got to win a title soon, Liverpool. They do. That's 17 sort of years. Long Will time. it be 18? We shall uh, perhaps have more idea at the end of the next 90 minutes. Almost time for us to go to Villa Park. Just uh, time for me to say thank you to Spencer Pryor and to Robbie Slater. We'll see you again tomorrow. That we'll see you tomorrow night. We'll see you tomorrow. Cheers, go guys. the Reds. We will leave you in the very capable hands of our match commentators in the English Midlands, Steve Banyard and Gary O'Reilly. Enjoy the game. Both these clubs with grand ambitions this year, both with owners from the US, of course, and indeed both with grand designs for their stadia too. On the field, both clubs quite frenetic in the transfer market. Aston Villa, like Liverpool, picking off their selected targets. Although, judging by the amount of money spent in the northwest, I suspect the vaults at Anfield are rather deeper and wider. Let's take a look at the team news here at Villa Park today. Marlon Harewood and Nigel Rio Coca swapping the claret and blue of West Ham for the same colour scheme in the Midlands. Rio Coca makes his Villa League debut today, Harewood among the subs. Goalkeeper Scott Carson also signed on loan from Liverpool yesterday, but he's precluded from playing against today's opponents as part of the deal. So between the posts, it's Stuart Taylor as Thomas Sorensen is out for a couple of weeks with a hamstring injury. For Liverpool, there's the expected league debut for Fernando Torres. Other newcomers, Verenin and Babel on the bench, along with new backup keeper Etange. What Liverpool fans, of course, will probably most want to see is that Steven Gerrard has a central role today, rather than out wide. And much attention, of course, on Fernando Torres, the most expensive player purchased by an English club this summer, a deal reportedly worth up to £26 million. third last season and actually there were fewer points between Liverpool and Villa down in 11th than there were between third and first showing just how big a gap Liverpool have to make up this year as for Villa well maybe it's a lucky omen but they haven't lost a league game since Liverpool's last trip here back in March Martin O'Neill Gary has uh, really turned things around during the course of the last 12 months I don't think there's any surprise to the fact that that's been achieved uh, the finish to last season was outstanding and their pre-season hasn't been that slack either. I just don't think Martin O'Neill has finished his spending just yet. I think they've still got components like that young man, Nigel Rio Coca, to add to the squad and uh, really give themselves a platform to work from this season. Curiously, you may remember last summer, they were out of the traps like a pedigree greyhound. Aston Villa didn't lose until week 10. That was at the end of October when they travelled up to, you guessed it, Liverpool. So fixtures with Liverpool marking the beginning and end of good runs for Aston Villa last season. But what of this man, Fernando Torres? I wonder whether he'll prove to be a Fernando Morientes. Uh, there is a high expectation for Torres. He comes with a, a great pedigree from Spanish football, both league and international. And uh, it's going to be a fascinating 90 minutes just to see how he does shape up in the colours of Liverpool. Well, Liverpool, it seems, with so many more options now, and uh, Rafa Benitez has spoken of the need to get far more goals this season. It let them down badly last year. Uh, yes, they have far more options, but then again, their aspirations are that much higher, and to achieve that, you need that multitude of options. Well, Stephen Gerrard and uh, Gareth Barry, the uh, two captains there. 15 seasons of the Barclays Premier League, but only four teams have won it. An elite quartet that doesn't include either of these two former European champions. Gary O'Reilly alongside me, and of course, uh, the most successful club ever in English football, Gary, winning the top division more than anybody else. Yes, uh, that brings expectation, and with the money spent this summer, that expectation really is fueled, and there will be an, a, a great deal of uh, pressure, although he'll deflect it on Rafa Benitez to deliver that particular piece of silverware. Well, 
Well, the gap in Liverpool's trophy cabinet is conspicuous, but it's one they intend to fill this season. The Barclays Premier League tops the wish list for the country's most successful club of all time as they finally seek to break the stranglehold of Manchester United and Chelsea. Expectation, ambition here in abundance today, both for Liverpool and for Aston Villa. Curiously, the last time Liverpool came to Villa Park, it was the start of Villa's nine-match unbeaten run that ran all the way to the end of last season. Steven Gerrard has got a cracking goal in Liverpool's pre-season tournament in Rotterdam. Playing with Arbeloa on the left side of defence today. Risa will play just ahead of him. Finnan over in the right-back slot. I think uh, young Gardner might find himself under a lot of pressure in the early stages of this game. It's no secret that Aston Villa are looking to strengthen that area and I think uh, Liverpool will try and push that and try and explore uh, any space or vulnerability there. Trey Gardner, who's just signed a new four-year deal to 2011. There's Nigel Rio Coca. And for Bama, dispossessed by Jermaine Pennant. Pennant's presence on the flank, again allowing Stephen Gerrard that central role. Of course, they've signed Yossi Benayoun as well. He'll be competing for places out wide. of the Barclays Premier League table for the first half of last season, but bottom half for nearly all of the uh, second part of the campaign, despite that a terrific late run. Leo Coca dispossessing Gerrard, and here's Petrov. Gardner. Bon Lahore, Carew and Young, almost a front three really for Aston Villa. And Kaut doing well here for Liverpool. Pedant, Kaut, Torres all forward. Needed a better delivery. The movement between Torres and Cow was exceptional, created the space at the far post. And there's Jamie Carragher, who, uh, if you believe the reports, Steve McLaren wants to persuade to uh, stay on for his country. Uh, if I were Mr McLaren, yes, I would be wanting a player like uh, Carragher to stay on board. But that young man, Agbon is going to give Carragher a real hard time for all the period he's on the pitch today. He's going to Daniel, believes Gabriel Agbon Lahore could be an England player within 12 months. It could be sooner if uh, things fall his way, he has that potential, he has that one thing of blistering pace, and as we saw last season, he began to develop a quite a telling eye for goal. Looking to use Pennant's pace against Wilfred Baumer, the Dutchman. Rotterdam, the uh, Liverpool starting 11 was completely changed for their second match against Feyenoord. Maybe an indication of the increased strength in depth available to Rafa Benitez now. And it was one of those typical driving runs with uh, Steven Gerrard linking with Fernando Torres. This is Young, change of number for him this year, wearing number seven, and now Gardner. Trying to slip it through for Stilian Petrov, it's back with Gardner. OK, we're 
five minutes or so into this game. It is a blistering pace, and this for a young man. Look, no fear. I think that would have been offside. Doesn't hesitate. Thrashes it in there. Rayner behind it, and the chairman rather happy. So Randy Lerner. Connections with uh, all sorts of uh, North American sports teams in this fixture, of course, today. His counterparts, George Gillette and Tom Hicks, also involved with uh, sports over in North America. Andy Lerner, Cleveland Browns, Tom Hicks, Dallas Stars, Texas Rangers, George Gillette, Montreal Canadiens. Penance cross. This is Risa. Interesting there when Reese is out there with Gardner. Gardner's got no support whatsoever. If Risa gets in behind, things open up badly for the defence. Well, wonderful conditions uh, for the opening day of the uh, Barclays Premier League season. It's the first English venue to stage international football in three different centuries. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Here's Gardner. A lot of very promising young players coming through at Aston Villa at the moment, but there's also experience, certainly with someone like uh, Olaf Melberg. It's a good blend, and I think it's necessary in any successful team that you do have that, particularly if you've grown your players organically. Here's a question for you, Gary. Who scored the uh, first goal of last season? Someone I was just talking about. For who? Well, it was Aston Villa who scored the uh, first goal last season. Angel. No, it was Melberg, actually. Was it? There you go. Rather surprising source. I thought you might throw me a teaser, that's why I went for Angel. Well, you know, there's another, another nice line about Melberg. He's uh, just putting the ball down here. He uh, was the only one to start all of the uh, league matches under Martin O'Neill last year. They've had to uh, chop and change their centre-back pairing on quite a few occasions. Lawson there alongside Melberg. They didn't lose a league game when he played for them last year. So records set to fall, potentially, in the coming weeks and months. Finnan for Liverpool to Pennant. Well, that's a little bit careless by Liverpool, and Young looking to thread it through for John Carew. He's guarded by Carragher. Carragher reads this well. I think if it was overhit just a little bit more, Carew would have had a chance to get in behind. They're on that counter-attacking mode, aren't they, Villa? Barry. Carew's gone up for it. Riley, our referee today. Now for Benitez, who's uh, really brought players to score more goals, win more matches this season. Laying the foundations for years to come. Melberg's header. There's a Petrov forward. Joy at this stage of the season when you see these lush green pitches. It's almost a manicured lawn out there for the players today. Well, the pitches are really in bad condition, but it just has that extra finish to it this stage of the year. Goal 
was when these two met at Villa Park here in March, but Villa looking closest to getting the opener here today. John Carew again snuffed out by Carragher. And he is having to work hard. This beautiful ball in, all Carew's got to do is wrap a foot around it and try and dink it past Rayner. But Carragher has different ideas, just as well for Liverpool. John Carew, the giant Norwegian, who uh, they brought here from Lyon, the French champions. Barry's corner. Oh, really good work by Stylian Petrov. Does well, Petrov contains possession in that final third, doesn't allow Liverpool a counter-attacking opportunity. Chasing from Pennant, has forced Bauma backwards, this is Lawson. Too high for Carew this time. It's OK playing up to Carew like that. If he does win the header, he's got to make sure both Young and Agbon Lahore are around him to feed on the knockdowns. Otherwise, it's just a flick back into Reina's hands and it's easy to deal with. Also, it took Liverpool ages to get going away from home last season. It was uh, December before they won on their travels. It was at Wigan. Well, you think about the opening game for them last season at Bramall Lane against Sheffield United. Terrible performance, really, from them, and uh, affected their whole season. Well, so it was a challenge from Chris Morgan that led to a Stephen Gerrard penalty. Apparently. <laughs> yes. Let's not get down that controversial route just yet. Now we're finished on that now. It does seem that Liverpool have so many options now. Really, Liverpool and Manchester United, the uh, biggest spenders in total in the summer. Dare I say, Chelsea have been comparatively dwarfed to this point, but uh, well, maybe there's more to come before the end of August. Well, maybe they have what they want, they need already. And uh, I think if you're Manchester United, you buy from a position of strength, which they have done. Liverpool in a similar in a similar mode, so uh, I think you look at Benitez and what he's decided is necessary, and that's goals. Now, you can't always find a striker that gets you 20, 25 goals a season, but if you've got several strikers that will contribute 10, a dozen, 15, maybe get a 20, you've got an awesome power to really go forward with. Yes, sir, flipping it past Gardner. Third last season above Arsenal on goal difference, of course, but 21 points the gap they have to make up on Manchester United this year. And a probing cross towards Pennant. Little shove by Pennant on the far side. What you did notice, quick free kick from Risa to Gerrard. The space is phenomenal down that side. Young Gardner's there with Petrov in front of him. They don't seem to be combining that well as a unit at this moment. Keeping uh, Fernando Torres comparatively quiet so far. But, uh, anybody who's uh, followed Atletico Madrid and indeed Spain in recent years will uh, know he's a, a very good all-round striker. Scores all sorts of different types of goals. That versatility, one of his great assets for Rafa Benitez this season potentially. Gardner. It's a good challenge. He gets that wrong Gardner, there's acres of space for Arbeloa to go into. There's talk at the moment of uh, Gabby Ainsett. Will he or won't he move from Manchester United to Liverpool? That's uh, going to a, a disciplinary uh, panel. There'll be a hearing coming up in the next week or two to decide uh, all of that. Sir Alex Ferguson at Manchester United said Ainsett does have a future still at Manchester United, but uh, well, to move from Manchester United to Liverpool is uh, almost unthinkable in the fans' eyes. Oh. 
Oh, little nudge there from Danny Lager. And what caused Agger to have such a problem? Agbon Lahore's pace. Absolutely blistering, and the only way he knows he's going to stop him is to knock him out of the game. There you go, son, have one of those. Once again, another change of number. Von Law, 15 last year, 11 this season. We're looking out for him today. Melberg and Lausen at the back post here for Villa. And John Carew being uh, closely monitored by Risa. If I'm not mistaken, those two had a spat in the Norwegian national uh, team, didn't they? Yes, they did. Stage. Mm. Let's keep an eye on that now. Here's a chance. Torres! First clear sight of goal for the uh, new £20 million plus man. That would have been an exceptional goal had he converted it. We can see his pace is there, his anticipation, his strength and his desire to score. Difficult one to strike, but you can see what he's about. Quick of foot, quick of mind. He's already got 40 caps for Spain, he's only 23 years old. Oh, that's clever. And here's a chance maybe for Petrov. Oh, that was close. Linesman's got a good view from, from that side, but it did seem very, very close from where we are. What will please both the managers at this point is that chances are being created. They are starting to find some gaps. Stuart Taylor just doing enough. It's a good driving run, but when it comes to Gerrard in the end, he just cannot quite get the power. The accuracy is there almost. But you see Torres, when he's pulling away from Pennant, he's always thinking that's a problem really for Villa if Gerrard starts to become a major factor in this game. Carew lifted clear by Finnan. Barry losing out. Alonso with that uh, wonderful touch he has, trying to uh, create something. Taylor has to come off his line. And he's got to think like that, Taylor, because of Torres' pace is such that he's a threat in behind. And if he doesn't patrol that area between centre backs, he's going to have a problem. And John Carew with those uh, chiselled features is a real handful. He had been suffering from a slight groin problem, but uh, passed fully fit yesterday. And Pennant made ground, but he didn't retain possession. And as a former Birmingham City player, the Aston Villa fans are always happy to see him at Villa Park. <laughs> yes. England's second city. Of course, it's uh, 25 years since Aston Villa's uh, greatest day. And the Tony Barton when they won the European Cup. That was in Rotterdam, wasn't it, when they beat uh, Bayern Munich? Who was the captain that night? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> I'll tell you later. Gareth Barry looking for Baumer. Beautifully taken by Kaut. Turned and kept it in his stride, all in one flowing movement. 
This is Risa. Alderoa supporting. That's nice. Risa to Arbeloa. That's a pennant. Not to support. side for Liverpool great for Benitez quality across could be better but it's a worry for Aston Villa because that will keep happening if they don't tighten that up and the answer to the question is Dennis Mortimer <laughs> of course in the days of uh, Peter with when you go back that far that's the last time that uh, Aston Villa had a 20 goal a season striker yeah you have to tell me about it <laughs> <laughs> I take it he got the better of you on a few occasions. Um, yes. But not that many, pleased to say. Nelson with a little nudge on count and Liverpool with a free kick as we move up towards the midway point of the first half. There's always a great sense of nervousness at the start of the season. Everybody wants to get off to a, a fly-up. Of course, last year, Liverpool were playing catch-up early on. It is. It's, it's a wonderful day, the first day of the season. Hopefully the sun shines, everything's great, the pitch is in fantastic condition. You can win the championship. And then you just kind of... Things don't quite go your way, or as they did in United's case last season, exactly the way they planned it. Reading some comments from... Uh, Referee Graham Pohl, who's uh, no longer part of the uh, Premier League list this season, but, uh, he was saying there are three days that every referee wants to uh, be a part of. One is the uh, opening day of the season, the FA Cup final, of course, and the third round of the FA Cup. So, uh, anybody involved today, very pleased to be doing so. goes in long it's maybe not the first header but the second ball that's important for Villa here Gardner with a wind up Young and Risa underneath the drop Carragher launching it long Torres uh, hungry and uh, keen to please I don't know there was too much wrong with that challenge from Torres from Liverpool that he uh, maybe controlled it with his hand or his arm. Yeah, he could dust that for fingerprints. He might get a couple. I just think when he does bring it down, the referee doesn't give the decision against him. He just throws the whole thing away. Quite surprised. As if in his own mind he knew he was guilty and gave it away. Well, we do want players to be honest. And that really has been uh, one of the problems for referees in recent years. Why that... Uh, players have made it so difficult to referee I agree with you I think players now challenge officials much more to come up with the correct decision Carragher stretching stretched well he's found Xabi Alonso Gerard, first time, count through the middle here for Liverpool. Support behind with Torres. They could just disentangle the ball from their feet. White Cout decides to check back on his right foot. 
And Mike Riley's given the free kick now. Torres on the ground. Rafa Benitez might have seen a possible advantage with Rita on the ball from uh, around about 25 to 30 yards. Yellow card shown to Olaf Melberg. You can see there that there's a kick in there on Alonso. Or is it to Petrov? No. And then a late challenge on Torres. I think he had a choice to choose from two there. Changes of complexion for Melberg now up against Torres. That little battle has just swung Torres's way. Just little glimpses of Torres starting to emerge for Liverpool. Xavi Alonso. A nice little curler looking for a little flicked touch. Sharper to it, Arbeloa with the block. Torres, count to Pennant. Has he got the beating of Barry? It's a great ball in and a real stretch for Melberg. Melberg does well because Torres pulls off him in the box and if you don't get it as a defender, you're in trouble. Watch the movement of Torres there towards the middle of your screen. When this comes in, he's drifted off. Melberg makes sure he nails the header. A long one here with Risa. Oh. I'm surprised how the lower let that bounce, but he's done enough to uh, dispossess Karu. <laughs> to just seven teams who played in every Premier League season. Oh, you work out the under five. There's Count. Good count when he's got his back to a defender, always looking to turn sharply and quickly. Good composure on the ball here from Liverpool. Nelson's header. As far as Steve Finnan. Alonso. Keep going, keep going. You can see Aston Villa working hard to contain Liverpool in those central midfield areas. Torres. Oh, great thinking from Torres. And couldn't find the finish to match. He knows he created out of nothing. Look at the marking, or look at the lack of it. Twisted, turned. All right, shots off target. More likely to be a danger to the uh, corner flag than the far post, but it's the quickness of mind we're talking about here. Potentially, he had three defenders around him when he received that ball. Before it comes in, that's when you mark him. Peru lifting it on. Anger underneath it. Pulled by Petrov, Agar again to count. Just get the feeling that Liverpool are beginning to turn the screw. Leo Coca, Carew. Liverpool seem to be lifting their game. Half an hour gone. Finner. Clever dummy, and Torres away. That's a super save from Taylor. Counts pull back, and it's an own goal. Disaster for Martin Lawson. But it all stemmed from the new man, Fernando Torres, and his quick thinking. This goal starts a long way back. 
you look at the passing, you look at the interplay between Gerrard and Finnan, little dummy, little over. Players don't give up, Count keeps going, follows through. The pressure is on Lawson. Oh, there's no way as a defender you intend to do that, but he's got no real chance to do anything but make the connection. It's drilled back, you force a defender to defend facing his own goal. This is what happens. Whoops. Count, as you saw from those replays, just got there, I think, before the whole of the ball had crossed the line. To God, because the referee said so. <laughs> well, true. But you could see that coming, you could see the pressure mounting through Liverpool's play, and you were wondering if Villa could see out this half with a clean sheet. Well, once again, what it does show is that that uh, combination of Count and Torres is a potentially explosive one. And again, no surprise for Liverpool fans to see Steven Gerrard at the heart of a move from the central midfield. So, when you think about uh, Liverpool's 20-goal-a-season strikers, well, this man is the last person to achieve it. But the ball was in. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, it stays active. It's great play from Kalp. Just the, the mental thought that goes into, I'll chase this, I won't allow it just to fade away. Count himself got to 12 goals in the Barclays Premier League last season. That was the best return by a Liverpool player in this competition. Crouch got 18 in all competitions, as opposed to Count's 14. Count has been kept pretty busy in this first half. Yeah, Gardner has a problem because it's not quite Petrov in front of him, sometimes it's Rio Coca and there's an interchange, and therefore there's a lot of space ahead of him which Liverpool are using to their advantage. And back by Agger, some hesitation once again, and uh, Count was the man just hovering on the shoulders of the Villa defenders looking to pounce. Torres, Count. Already striking up a great understanding. Awkward back pass for Taylor to deal with. Oh, maybe didn't look so initially, but it proved to be one. I'm not sure the goalkeeper's that confident or happy dealing with back passes at that pace while he stood on his own goal line. And as a defender by trade yourself, Gary, surely the rule is play it wide of the goal for the, the keeper to clear, rather than on target. Risa takes out one sweetly, Taylor's uh, got a hand to it, and Lawson completes the clearance. And what you saw there is what I discussed earlier on with you, Risa one-on-one -on -one with Gardner, no defender coming in to support Gardner, Risa getting in behind and the problems that that causes for him and his defenders. Taylor, by far and away the busier of the two goalkeepers in this first half so far. This is his first start of 2007, just one substitute appearance at Bolton earlier on. And here you are, you see it. Reese are in behind. Why? Because Torres and Couch stay right out of the way, and that is on purpose to create that space, to create that vulnerability in Villa's defence. You've noticed there as well the way that Couch took a little bit of a gamble. And went to uh, the near post area. That's why defenders don't like strikers. They're always active, they're always sneaky. Well, Martin O'Neill has proved a, a very shrewd manager down the years. And the players are leaving the club. Through the course of uh, this summer, uh, Coca, Harewood, and uh, now Scott Carson, the main arrivals. I mean, there has been interest in West Bromwich Albion's uh, central defender. There's been talk of fullbacks, maybe even another striker. So I don't think the spending's finished this season for Martin O'Neill. He's got a very 
closely knit group now. Arguably Liverpool's changes very much uh, as well with a view to the demands placed on them by involvement in Europe. Of course, they've got to Champions League action coming up this week, away to the French side to lose. They certainly can't afford to be snared of the traps. Notice some of the players all sporting their summer haircuts. It's almost like the first day back at school, isn't it? Just a little. Count gets the return from Pennant. This is Risa. Torres alongside him. Here's Gerard. The circle of night vultures. They're waiting, absolutely waiting, just for the opportunity to make the strike. Sets up nicely by Risa. Just gets under it a bit, Gerard. I think the presence of Gardner does enough to put him off. Well, they were queuing up here. And it could have been uh, one of maybe three players who had the strike on goal. And so Stephen Gerrard among those who's... Uh, a new deal with Liverpool in the summer to give them some continuity. I think they had to make sure that that cornerstone was in place. <laughs> Daniel Agger really keeping uh, Sami Hoopia on the uh, sidelines these days. I think the Carragher Agger partnership is preferred for Benitez. Settled, he's comfortable, confident with it. And Agger is a grower, only 22 years old. He has the, uh, the benefit of a few years on Sammy Hopi of the Finn. Yes, for sure. And that's something I'm uh, sure is featured strongly in Rafa Benitez thinking. Agger was uh, Liverpool's most expensive defender when he. Joined them back in January of last year. They've come for just over 18 months now. Seriously, Rafa Benitez has never seen Liverpool win their opening day fixture under his stewardship. This is his fourth attempt. Here's Carew. for Villa, took a deflection, hit the back of Nigel Rio Coker, I think. And when he cuts back inside in his right foot here, Barry, lovely little turn, Alonso all the way out the wrong way, just the nick off the back of his teammate. I think that was on its way towards the far post. He's got to exert a, a bigger, bigger role in this game. Same with Rio Coker, they've got to begin to become more dominant in centre midfield take out the threat that Alonso and Gerrard are posing for them, the orchestration that comes from that pairing. Yes, if you were to uh, maybe oversimplify the uh, midfield situation, potentially three central midfielders for Villa to Liverpool's two. And of course, uh, good players do move and cover. Not quite as simple as that. Nicely touched off here from Caruso Barry. Passing Petrov, picking out Gardner. Just over five minutes to half time. That's a great ball in. And arguably, the uh, Aston Villa players got in each other's way. It's Rio Coca who's toe poked it behind. You know, I, I, I was waiting for a dominant presence in there. When this comes in, it shouldn't be that difficult to deal with. But Villa players just sat there waiting. And somebody's got to dictate the process. Someone's got to make that initial move. In the end, it's Rio Coca. For me, should have been really Carew, the striker who leads the way. Interesting to see this season how many yellow cards Nigel Rio Coca picks up. He uh, received more cautions than any other player in the uh, top flight last year. And I know Martin O'Neill sees him as being uh, Aston Villa's equivalent of Roy Keane. Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> He's competitive, let's put it that way. Oh, he has a new challenge. He's in familiar colours. Martin Lawson, who has put through his own goal today, the only goal of the match so far. Petrov. Rio Coca. Oh, did well to uh, just cushion that on for Barry. This is better from Villa, it's Petrov. Another well, straight at Rainer in the end. The angle wasn't quite the best for Petrov, but I think Carew is a little bit disappointed it didn't. It slid into him to open the thing up. With Ashley Young, back from our below up. This is Pennant. Villa have had a little spell. They just seem as if they're clawing their way back into this game with possession, and Petrov popping up that in that advanced position tells me he's comfortable getting in there. You see here, that's the strike. Carew in the centre of picture there. They've been in a better position, as I think Martin O'Neill would agree. As ever, we always get a passionate response from Martin O'Neill. Thoroughly engrossed, thoroughly involved. I don't think you go to bed worrying about what Martin's thinking. He's told you, he's passionate about that, and the players respond positively to that attitude. Aston Villa's top scorer in our season. Nine goals in the league. And then Gareth Barry with eight. Michel and Moore got four. Only goal today is uh, scored by Martin Lawson, but unfortunately for Aston Villa, for their opponents. Rio Coca straight to Arbeloa. A gasp of frustration from the Villa supporters there. Jim quicker, sharper and stronger, Steven Gerrard. Gerrard, Kout. Almost too quick for the Dutchman, really. Aston Villa have to be careful, one or two little errors creeping into their play. They've got it back here, and they've got that terrific surge of Gabriel Agbon Lahore. He needs support. In the end, he had to try and go it alone. Shot smashed by Carew off the Liverpool defence for a throw. You just sense an element of frustration, and Agbon Lahore doesn't sense that he's on his own. He's got to take that on his own responsibility. Baumer. 45th minute, Carew coming in, chance here for Ashley Young. And that is possibly Aston Villa's best chance of this first half. It is, good cross in, good competition with Carew. Tough for Young to nail this one, very difficult, but you have seen them happen. But I think with Petrov, looks as if he's playing that much further forward right now, and it is having a beneficial effect to Villa's attacking. You've seen that shot come in. We've seen this one fly over the bar. If you think about the first half in an entirety, that's two of the best chances we've seen. This is the uh, three central midfielders. You'd expect uh, Rio Coca to uh, to sit a little deeper at times and allow Barry and Petrov further forward. A lucky bad. Face up there, but ready. One added minute at the end of the first half. Gareth Barry could be playing himself into uh, a bit of danger there. In the end, uh, he survived, but for a moment it looked a little precarious. The word gamble is right at the front of my mind. Outrageous to come inside like that and, and try and, and, and get out of the problem you've fixed yourself into. 
He's too experienced to let that happen again, and I'm sure Martin O'Neill will be explaining that to him just in about a minute or so's time. For Liverpool in many ways, but uh, Martin Lawson and Aston Villa, it's been a bit of a nightmare. An own goal from the Dane in the 31st minute of the match, separating these teams at half-time. Torres and Kaut using all their determination to create the opening goal, and the unfortunate Martin Lawson, the player who put through his own goal past Stuart Taylor. Aston Villa trailing then against Liverpool at half-time. And the half-time scoreline here is Aston Villa nil, Liverpool one. Live him that are mobile, busy. Uh, I look at Aston Villa and I still think there's components missing. Uh, they've got a great strike force, they don't quite yet have the wherewithal to support them, and I think that's something Martin O'Neill is more than aware of. Potentially, might we see Marlon Harewood make his league debut? Uh, yeah, we might see him in a, in a Villa shirt. I just think maybe, if he does, it might be in wide right midfield. Maybe they'll remove Petrov from the action. Don't know yet. What about uh, the partnership then for Liverpool? Lots of interest in Fernando Torres, understandably, and uh, Torres partnering Dirk Kout today, a Spaniard and a Dutchman. How have they fared? Well, uh, I wouldn't particularly like to play against them as a pairing. They're, they definitely are mobile. Kout is perpetual motion, Torres is particularly quick. Both have intelligent movement. They threaten in behind, they drop and come towards the ball. They move laterally. They give every defender they come up against a whole raft of different problems, a real handful. And as we've already seen, they both possess an eye for goal. Well, there's a change here for uh, Aston Villa at the start of the second half with uh, Martin Lawson, a man who was uh, unfortunate to put through his own goal in that first period, replaced here by Gary Cahill. Gary Cahill, who uh, should slot in alongside Olof Melberg in this second period, but keeping these two quiet is quite a task. Absolutely. The thing, the thing for Cahill is he's not being pushed into a position he's unfamiliar with. So one goal in it. Draw or a win for Liverpool today. We'll see them claim their 1,000th point in the Barclays Premier League. They've spent the summer on the cusp of that milestone, a tantalising 999 points since the Premier League began. There's confirmation of the change for Aston Villa at the start of the second half. Gary Cahill replacing Martin Lawson. Changed colours today, of course. The white shirts here. Risa operating on the left side of midfield for them. Has that bullet of a shot, which he's not frightened to use. Wondered how long we'd wait before that emerged this season. Cuts inside, doesn't have any other thought in his mind but to bulge the back of the net, and he is not that far away. Maybe that's a sighter. So Risa. Notably in February this year with that uh, decisive goal in Barcelona in the Champions League. But then again, we've discussed already Gabriel Heinz has maybe, maybe not moved from Old Trafford, so <laughs> I wonder what's going through his mind right now. Well, here come Liverpool once more. Torres sweeping it back. Risa with the uh, looping effort. The business of moving from Manchester United to Liverpool, it's not been done since 1964, a certain Phil Chisnell. But the arbitration panel will uh, decide whether Rafa Benitez will get his man in the uh, coming ten days. Yes, watch this space. I just wonder how the uh, United fans will respond to Ainsa if he stays. Coca. 
the answer. Mike Nelson, in a way, has uh, scored something of an own goal in that sense. He's Ashley Young. And then you go at Finnan. He's done well. Young, great pullback. Needs someone following up. Risa sweeps it away. That was the invitation to the party. That was it. Saw a little bit of genius flashing past Finnan here. Goes outside, cuts it back. We need a claret and blue shirt on the end of that. Young's corner. And to a screen their eyes on this uh, near touchline. Shadows over three quarters of the pitch now. Trouble is, when, when the sun drops that low, it just makes life very, very difficult. That's a good defender's excuse, by the way. <laughs> it's part of the union, folks, don't worry. Jamie Carragher, leader of the uh, Defenders Union. Oh, yes. Which way round did you mean that? Uh, you interpret that as you wish. There's a whole <laughs> list. <laughs> There's a special book gets issued to every defender beginning of the season. And here's Gardner being pressured by Kaut. Bonhoor and uh, Carew. Trying to uh, combine Young and Agbon Lahore as a swap flanks through the course of the match so far. Here's Baumert. And Villa, to me, looks sharp, bright, with Young and Agbon Lahore. Look as if they're ready, they're up. As if that, that man there has got into their minds just during the half-time break. Made them realise that this actually is the season it started. Another thing with Martin O'Neill, his passion, his enthusiasm is... Uh, unquestionably infectious transmits it to the players like one of his old mentors mr clough he talks you listen he said, uh, never like to have been on the receiving end of uh, his wrath though he's actually young a little spark from him and uh, Maybe that will ignite Aston Villa in their second period. Carew to Young. But Villa need to see more of Young and Agbon Lahore in possession, doing what they do best, which is teasing and driving at defenders. And the two uh, defenders got in a bit of a muddle there, Cahill and Melberg. Is Torres. Alonso. Pre-season, Aston Villa have been playing over uh, in North America, firstly in Canada. They played at Toronto FC, which was one of the venues for the FIFA Under-20 World Cup this summer, and also Columbus Crew. They have been scoring freely. Oh, just asking to Milan. Dropped them 3-0, did they not? Not really uh, pulling the play back here for this Villa free kick. Didn't feel they made the most of their uh, set plays in the first half, Villa. Particularly when you've got a big guy like Carew in there. Gary Cahill making his presence felt in the box as well. It's hard to get miserable already the start of the season, but that delivery, to my mind, was not good enough. Doesn't do what you took you work. 50 minutes. I know, I've been patient. <laughs> you work hard on set plays, and you've got to get the delivery absolutely spot on. Carew's flick. Rio Coca here. Well forward here for Aston Villa. So whilst he found the space and he gets a thumbs up gesture for uh, John Carew's little layoff here, okay, he couldn't you, find the target. You need players to link up with Carew because he's battling and fighting to get the flicks on, but give the credit to Liverpool's defence. They sense Rio Coca's presence, they sense the danger, and they make it difficult for him to get a strike on target. full pre-season to uh, get his team ready for the off. And he 
neat and tidy from Liverpool. Carragher's hoister to Torres, who does enough. Look out. Good toe from Melbourne. Pennant, Gerard to the right. Kout, worth a try, certainly. But you can see Dirk Kout's thinking. It's tied in that area, so he pulls a way out. And that cutback sets him up, and he doesn't hesitate, does he? He wants that near post, sees he's got a bit of a chance, a bit of daylight to aim for. against uh, Birmingham in the Midlands derby season before last he's Ashley Young he's looking full of beans very lively very sharp and uh, Finnan fortunately for Liverpool there did connect with the ball Young making something out of nothing there Baumer's cross overcooks it which is a shame but what I want to go back to is Ashley Young he needs to be driving in amongst players, but he needs to get that into the 18-yard area because if you miss time a challenge, referee Mike Riley's got no other chance but to give a penalty, and that's something that's going to bring Villa back into the game. Certainly Young and Baumer as a combination down the Villa left is uh, potentially very potent. Baumer actually started off as a, a midfielder. Remember... Uh, Eric Heretz made him a defender, Goose hitting made him a centre-back, he's now a left-back again. Talking of left-sided players, Risa losing out to Gardner. That little cameo there, Liverpool's passing, not quite as slick as we saw in the first half, and I think that's down to Villa working a bit harder, getting amongst them, getting a bit busy, all right, blocking Risa off for sure. But I just think there's that that's come out in the second half in the Villa side that maybe wasn't there in the first. Tennant always struggling to get there. And Young has uh, really engaged himself at the start of this second period. Suddenly the white shirts all uh, surrounding Ashley Young whenever he gets a touch of the ball now. And Downer has to play it out because uh, his colleague is injured. Jermaine at Pennant. See here as he turns away. Little nibble. Just a little nibble from Pennant. That's bad discipline. Totally unnecessary. Quite subtle from Pennant. And I think uh, Carragher there just explaining a few facts to Jermaine Pennant on the back of it. it to make up in this second half. And uh, Nigel Rio Coco putting pressure on uh, Arbolo, the corner flag helping out too. The ball's still live. Great flick Alonso is Risa to Couch. He's had to take it in his stride once again. Rio Coco. And Bon Lahore. Certainly, Antoine Lahore and Young, they have the, uh, the pace, the speed, the youth. Alongside John Carew. They have the trickery to really torment Liverpool's defence. And I think the more that they're able to bring them into the game, the better the effect for Aston Villa. Alonso, Gerrard. There's other options as well for uh, Rafa Benitez in the coming weeks and months with uh, Sissoko, Mascherano, who can uh, slot into those central areas. Now Rio Coca's found a bit of space. Ashley Young seeing a lot of the ball in the second half. They're doubling up on him. Oh, 
by Jermaine Pennant. There's a confirmation he was, in fact, a yellow carded for that challenge a couple of moments ago on Ashley Young. And Baumer needs a bit of revenge, perhaps, which Pennant does not like. There's going to be another card here, clearly. Mike Riley for Wilfred Baumer this time. I wonder whether Pennant's reaction will uh, cause him further grief here. Only one man will decide that. Baumer will say the ball was there to go for. Uh, it studs up, and I think that's what's going to influence the referee's thinking for Baumer. But whether or not he's got any tolerance with Pennant, we'll wait and see. I think the defender's got every right to go in for that, as he did, but... The studs up, Pennant's reaction is... And he comes back for more. Well, the argument uh, for uh, Wilfred Baumer there is that with Pennant hovering with menace, well, he simply had to uh, keep him at bay to avoid any worse confrontation. For sure, I just wonder where Jermaine Pennant's head is right now. Is it focused on the game at hand? to receive a yellow card. Ian Melberg on yellow pennant for Liverpool, all cautioned here today. It's teed up for Risa. Yet to get in the groove. But always a potential threat. I'm surprised they've only chosen to put one man in to, ch to charge that down. What would Risa's reputation? <laughs> get as many bodies in the way as you can. Sometimes a courage is a quality much needed if you're facing a Risa free kick. For sure. Peru missed the header. And uh, there's a chance by Mike Riley to uh, have impeded the Liverpool defender there. He sort of gets a piece of uh, Aga's arm, doesn't he? Uh, that's going to happen. I don't believe that's the case. And neither does uh, Martin O'Neill. Certainly a very soft free kick to give away. I actually defended the attacker there. Strange things are happening. Not the first of April, is it? Not quite. Now it's a spring like weather. And it's opening day of the season. And a mopping up. Villa now need to make sure they continue this pressure and when they've got it, they need to get the equalising goal. They've got to get themselves back into this game. Because this is a poor period for Liverpool. This was tight enough against Gardner here. They've reached the hour mark. Comes off Aga, Barry wanted an extra touch. Liverpool have a possible break. And they had a possible break. I don't know that there's any contact from Gareth Barry there, and I think that's what he's explaining to Mike Riley, the referee. Maybe this will show. Is there contact? Oh, it's the faintest, if any at all. I think this is all really stemming from those two incidents involving Jermaine Pennant, firstly with Ashley Young and then with Wilfred Baumer. There's a little bit of tension, a little bit of hostility creeping into the proceedings. Yeah, I think Carrick is an experienced player. He knows he's under pressure. And uh, just go down. If there's the referee, you again being forced to make a decision and come up with the right answer. Count to Risa. Comes off Melberg. And a comfortable catch for Stuart Taylor. Interesting, we, we had a lot of anticipation and saw a lot of bright things from Cout and Torres in the first half. This second period so far, they're not quite anonymous, but they've hardly been a feature. That has to say a lot about the way Villa have gone about their game in the second period. And notice on the Villa shirts, a new club crest this year. A crest uh, which has uh, the four initials, AVFC, along the top. It also has a, a star, which is significant. Represents uh, their European Cup triumph back in 1982. As the word prepared underneath the line. 
really uh, not making a, a lot of it because to them it signifies new beginnings as a club as well as to the season. Now Liverpool on the attack with Couch. He's done well, he's done very well. And what a block that is. Steven Gerrard must have thought that was a nailed on certainty for a goal. But Gardner and uh, his goalkeeper, I think, between them, managed to clear. It's Gardner's work, and uh, sometimes it can be painful work. But you do what you have to do to stop the other side scoring. Oh, dear. It's definitely onside. That much is playing in behind. You can see Torres's movement in the centre of the area. Gerrard tucks in. You just throw whatever it is in the way. And hopefully it's not going to be too painful afterwards. Crunch. Well, sometimes you have to put yourself where it hurts. Sometimes where it really hurts. So now he's struggling, make him run to the side of the pitch and wait and then drag him back on. I'm surprised he's not got tears in his eyes. Sort of thing you need to see from your team as a coach and as a manager. Players committed to that degree. The uh, stadium here, incidentally, uh, the Holt End, very famous. Opposite uh, the Holt End, you have the North Stand, which they're looking to uh, fill in the corners in the coming uh, years. His couch. To couch. Who uh, has really settled into life in. Uh, England very well indeed in the last year. He has, his game suits the style of the Premiership. Just a little bit uncomfortable with his left foot. It's not that bad, not at all. But you can see he would have preferred that on his uh, more favoured right foot. But it's the set-up play, Torres, Gerrard, Kaut. In the last couple of minutes, we've seen a lot more from them. Broken here, that was right on the edge of the area. Now John Carew went down as if to say Aston Villa should get a penalty. The flag is up anyway. For me, that's not a penalty. I think he drags his leg and he, he goes to try and buy a cheap one. This is Brian, by the way, who's uh, on the dog outside, the assistant. If there is contact, it's to me outside and I think... The referee and I agree. The referee uh, certainly agreeing there with uh, Liverpool in more ways than one. With that little assist for Dirk Count. Well, a capacity crowd for the opening day of the season inside Villa Park today. Count and uh, Torres looking to combine here again for Liverpool. That's good news for Villa, because they haven't always played to a packed house, have they, over the last couple of seasons? No, so they haven't. You talked about the badge and the new beginning. Maybe the fans have bought into that dream. Yeah, 42,500, uh, or roundabouts, is the uh, capacity at the moment. They're looking to, mention filling in the corners, they're looking to take it up to 51. It is actually a great stadium to play in. Always enjoyed playing there. The, the, the atmosphere when it's full is, is fantastic. It's been used to down the years for so many FA Cup semi-finals as a, as a neutral venue. Nice and central for everybody to get to. Now Gareth Barry. As Villa look for an equaliser, Barry claims the trip from Xabi Alonso, but it's Barry who's yellow-carded for simulation, as the referees will call it. Diving. Well, zero tolerance. You can see in there he's got possession. Which Good was decision, isn't it? absolutely spot on. Disappointed in Gareth Barrick because he's better than that. But go back to the point we discussed in the first half. Referees are under a lot of pressure to make the right decision. Yes, that's another example of where the players are making the referees' job that much. It's purely down to tactical change and the necessity to get a point or three points. And I mentioned, uh, well, there's Ryan Babel. Stripping uh, ready for uh, Liverpool here. Another great young player. We're getting a glimpse of the future for both these clubs today as well. 18 minutes to go. Gerrard's free kick. 
Luke Moore with a new number as well, number eight for Luke Moore. He got a hat-trick, by the way, in that pre-season game against Toronto FC, where uh, Mo Johnston is the coach. I was uh, curious to see. And the Scottish international. to get the equaliser here. Carragher's header clear. Here's Risa. There's Cahill. Melbourne. Yeah, maybe Penatou's coming off here for uh, Ryan Babel, who can play either up through the middle or indeed out wide. I think uh, Babel's more likely to be given time on the flanks, bearing in mind who they've got to choose from as a central striker. Not too sure that Jermaine Pennant's uh, endeared himself to not only the Aston Villa fans, but to his own manager, Rafa Benitez, with uh, some of his actions today. In particular, his reactions to Wilfred Baumer's challenge. So here's Ryan Babel, 20-year-old Dutchman. Remember, he scored a goal on his uh, Dutch debut against uh, Romania some oh, almost two and a half years ago now. That gives you some idea how highly he's thought of in the Netherlands for him to be uh, blooded as a teenager in the national team well doesn't the national team manager Marco van Basten say he is the next Thierry Henry well, he comes with a very high reputation and he's cost to Liverpool some 11.5 million pounds he must pack an awful lot of potential But we saw it with uh, Sir Alex Ferguson and Cristiano Ronaldo. When you've got a talent that's obvious, that's young, that's fresh, that can be moulded, it's worth spending the money. Because in three years' time, it'll cost twice as much, if not three times as much. So that's where you get in. Stay there! Stay there! Carew's flick. Oh, and Moore was pulling the trigger, ready for the shot. Ah, but Jamie Carragher read it all the way. Gareth Barry dropping back into that uh, left-back role when needed. Ashley Young clips it on Luke Moore. He took a touch away from Carew, no communication. None. Great skill from Young, though, absolutely stunning. And here's Babel for Liverpool. Danger here for Aston Villa. They've left themselves a bit stretched. And Babel almost introduced himself within a matter of minutes. I just won the beautiful play from Barbel. Slips it out wide. Cout takes a touch here. I thought it maybe he's taken it too far. When it cuts back, I thought this is in. Oh, how about that? And that young man must have thought he scored on his. Oof, that is close. Again, a point you made earlier, Gary, about uh, good strikers. I think you mentioned it with Torres. But uh, Barbel there, when the opportunity broke. He checked his run and just pulled back and made himself a little bit of extra space. Sometimes you stand still and create space. You don't have to move into it. Killed on by Barry. Swept clear by Carragher. Here's Melvert. Time running out for Villa. 15 minutes left. Here's Rio Coca. Melbourne. Rio Coca tried to make the extra man. Carragher had read it. Petrov, desperately trying to keep uh, Kaut at bay. Well, he's happy with that decision. It's a competitive game, and in centre midfield, it's the most competitive part of the game. been a great threat in this uh, second half in particular Carragher's header again Carew's trying to get there it's a bit of a mad scramble Rio Coca with a touch on and I think there might have been a push in there oh for sure there's a push what you're looking at is a Liverpool defense not comfortable at the moment in getting rid of that ball out of the danger area up it goes doesn't get clear of the line 
Rio Koja could have done with a better first touch, maybe. I want you to bear in mind, uh, for England at international level, the uh, injury to players like uh, John Terry, Ledley King at the moment. I wonder uh, Steve McLaren would like Jamie Carragher to make himself available for the national side. You can imagine the equal and opposite is Rafa Benitez saying, no, 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 no. Uh, the old club, the country route. There's World Cup qualifiers coming up uh, in a matter of a few weeks. Liverpool looking to make a, a second change shortly. And it's another of their new boys who uh, we understand will be coming on. In the meantime, here's Dirk Kaut feeding Ryan Babel. Just a little glimpse of what Babel can offer. Gerard needed a bit more than a glimpse, I think. I think we saw a wry smile from Stevie Gerard there. He knows that's not the, what's expected. Well, here's Andre Voronin, who's uh, coming on for Fernando Torres. Big price tag, big reputation. He hasn't scored a goal today, but he certainly played a major part in the goal that Liverpool have to their name. From what I've seen from Torres this afternoon in a Liverpool shirt, I have no doubts that he will be a major player in the Premiership this season. And he will score goals. I just saw him shake hands with the new goalkeeper they picked up from Lens yesterday, Charlie Tonge. In many ways, a slightly curious Charlie Tonge from Lens. Coming. Uh, to Liverpool, and Liverpool letting Scott Carson go, much younger. Andre Voronin here, 28-year-old Ukrainian, and they've signed from Bayer Leverkusen. Go, go, go inside, go inside. Now Carew, losing out to Chabi Alonso initially, Aga forward. Melbourne. Aga. Good hustling from Rio Coca. don't look terribly comfortable at the moment at times. One goal may not be enough. They can uh, look to add to it here. Gerard to Babel. Voronin and Kaut lurking on the edge of the box. Babel picks out Risa. I think that's a bit greedy from Risa. He's got two options in towards penalty spot and far post, but he goes for the strike. A bit disappointed, I thought he'd be a little... Uh, more team orientated, shall we say? Just took a little nick off Gardner as well on the way through there. <laughs> That's the fact that Liverpool have a corner, which Risa himself will take. <laughs> Two of the new boys alongside one of the old hands. And it's Stuart, Stuart Taylor's hands who've uh, Missed the ball completely. Petrov only as far as Bubble! And that was a stinging shot which Taylor did well to beat clear. Bubble, still in available too. Take a deep breath. <laughs> oh, that is a superb save. One of a, a string of saves from Taylor this afternoon. The ladies of which drawn out of him by that man, Barber. So of any good player, isn't it, Gary, when you see a player who starts to torment defenders and there's a real buzz when he gets the ball, no matter where he is. Oh, and he can do that. And uh, Martin O'Neill, I'm happy about something with Mike Riley, the referee. That's a good challenge. Oh, oh, oh. The start of the season it is for uh, both these clubs. Aston Villa away to Newcastle United next week. Liverpool with that Champions League uh, tie to come in to lose. Home to Chelsea next weekend.
if his Premier League kicks off, you have to be fit and ready for action. This is Cahill for Aston Villa. Barry. Peru lurking on the edge of the box, he's made the run! And he got to the header. And that's the difference when you've got a wide left position with a natural left footer. Young, when he's there, cuts back and drips it in with the right foot. This is natural flow, and Carew benefits from it. Here's the strike that brings the save out of Taylor. Instant reaction. One take, second is the strike. Superb technique, great save. things about seeing some of these great young players coming through is the, the raw energy they bring to the match. There's a lack of fear which uh, often inhibits slightly older players. Absolutely. You can't have too much out there, but uh, you, you need definitely that element in your side. Oh, oh you, that's it. flick, and it's come off Carragher. It's come off his arm, and it's a penalty for Villa. can't see the referee giving anything but a penalty in that situation it's it's a flick it skips off there there's no real intention but it's a handball in the box well on the opening day of last season Liverpool were given a debatable penalty shall we say against Sheffield United at Bramall Lane there's a yellow card here for Rayner's protest. Here's the psychology. Rayner will be up, Carragher's already in there. They'll move the ball, they'll try everything they can to affect, I think it's Gareth Barry, the penalty taker here. The argument's still going on. Six minutes to go, Gareth Barry. Six of his nine goals last season were from the penalty spot. And that's the first of the new season. Villa level with six minutes to go. Good strike, wrong direction. It would have been a good height had he gone to his left rein up. But Barry will uh, tell you that wasn't the case. It's the pressure that Villa have been gently building and building and building. It's tough on Carragher because I don't think he had any intention to handle the ball. It just comes up, but the referee has got to give that. touch of good fortune about both the goals today and a touch of misfortune for the individuals of Martin Lawson and Jamie Carragher. Lawson with the own goal in the first half, Carragher with the handball that's led to the penalty from which Gareth Barry has driven in Aston Villa's equaliser. Here's Steven Gerrard, thought he was blocked off by Petrov and the referee was well placed to see it. He cuts back inside, Gerrard does exceptionally well. Can Petrov get out of the way? Maybe he could, but it's nigh on impossible, and I think he's pleading his case, but I'm not going to change the decision. It's Steven Gerrard. Oh, that's magnificent! Steven Gerrard may well just have won it for Liverpool, and he may well have won it with a magical, magical goal. What's the use of keeping it a secret if you've got it? That is absolute superb talent. This is... Unstoppable. Look at the height and the curl on that. And look how close to the real far top corner for Stuart Taylor to try and reach. Taylor's up there with his right hand, the higher hand to try and save it. It gets a fingertip on it. But not only does he get it up, down, curl it round, it's got power on it because the power's now 
beaten Taylor as well as the direction. That is just superb natural talent. And there's one relieved man. Yes, big, uh, big bodies, Stephen Gerrard, Jamie Carragher. And Gerrard with a, a brilliant free kick to restore Liverpool's advantage here. 11 goals in all competitions last year, seven in the Barclays Premier League, 23 in all competitions the year before last. Once again, Steven Gerrard is that trump card for Liverpool. And Aston Villa having uh, dragged themselves back on level terms. Well, it lasted only a matter of moments. Xabi Alonso's header away. And there are just two minutes of the 90 remaining. Voronin. Coker. Well, Martin O'Neill getting very frustrated at uh, some of these free kicks that Aston Villa are giving away. I think Rio Coca was harshly done by. Didn't seem too much contact in there. You've seen a lot worse, and the referee ignored them. Well, I should just mention one of the. Uh, Acquisition Liverpool have made in the summer. They've signed a, a central midfielder called Lucas. He's a, a young Brazilian. And he's uh, currently injured at the moment. Lucas Levia is uh, more of his name. I know uh, at the Under-20 World Cup in Canada, which I was at, he was uh, very highly thought of by the Brazilian delegation. They rated him as their best prospect. So watch out for him in the coming months. His name is Lucas. They also picked up a, an Argentine youngster yesterday, Sebastian Leto, who was wanted by Real Betis and River Plate. He's a left-sided midfielder. So, so many options now for Rafa Benitez. The signs for them very encouraging. A lot of the bigger clubs are bringing in young talent. As we've already discussed, you can pay £30 million for the finished article at 24, you can maybe pick it up for 3 or £4 million at 18, 19. And that free kick, yeah, you can see Petrov really got put between a rock and a hard place. Take a bow, my man. Game over. Well, wow. Every vein in his body is filled with the red blood of Liverpool. Count off Sissoko on for the closing stages. Now that's Benitez shutting the game down. Petrov's given a yellow card for the uh, protest. In comes Young's corner. Four minutes of added time here. Young. Chance clear by Alonso. Still time for Aston Villa if they're to equalise for the second time in this match. Rio Coca. Petrov alongside him. Bypassed. Ashley Young. Look how many claret and blue shirts in the box. And what an important tip over by Reina from Carew's header. Does whatever he can, Carew, to get a touch on this. I even think he's facing away from goal when he heads it. Just shows you sometimes just get the ball in the box and see what happens. All Aston Villa's players coming forward for this. Reina protected here by Mike Riley, who saw a push in there, according to uh, his gesture to the Villa players. sure what I see a push but uh, I'd be surprised if there wasn't a push <laughs> at any corner inevitable really well they believe it could be the year for Liverpool under Rafa Benitez the prize of the Barclays Premier League title is the one that has eluded them since 1990 it's a long time for Liverpool to have to wait but but they will quickly tell you that uh, they still have two titles more than Manchester United in England's top division. But it's the one title they covet above everything else. Petrov. 
two added minutes remaining here. Gareth Barry. Harry Cahill well forward. It's a bit of a scramble. Rio Coca tries to dig it out. Moore can't get a shot away. Liverpool happy to clear the decks. But it is desperate. It is now biting at the back for Liverpool. These are nervous moments for Liverpool. Can they protect their advantage? <laughs> Ashley Young. Villa having to throw everybody forward now. One last desperate attempt and one last added minute. of the seat time, whether you support the home or away side. Others touch on. Sissoko. The tackle actually young, he's had a splendid match. Sissoko doesn't seem to be with it. It's got to protect the ball, do not give possession away, even if you are 2-1 up. Petros, Carew, young to the left here. They need bodies in the box, they need them quickly. Appeals for handball there. Against Finnan, not given. Barry. Fought away, Matt Carew once again is first to it. And that may be Villa's last chance. You did think that maybe this was it. Carew gets in between the two defenders. Just cannot get the accuracy, and they are screaming at each other, Liverpool players. For Benitez expecting the whistle. It's the ideal start for the pretenders to Manchester United's Barclays Premier League crown. Steven Gerrard with a magnificent free kick to win it late on. They were helped out with an own goal from Martin Lawson in the first half. A penalty from Barry helped out Villa, but only temporarily. Liverpool winners here by two goals to one. Three goals in the match, and the first with a very strong touch of good fortune for Liverpool, but it was all created by that new front pair of Torres and Kaut. Determination, good combination, and in the end, the error from Martin Lawson putting through his own goal. Despair for him, delight for Liverpool. And then it was anxiety and frustration for Jamie Carragher in the second half. The handball from the Liverpool defender gave Gareth Barry the chance to tuck away a penalty that levelled it up for Aston Villa. And with six minutes to go, Villa thought they'd won themselves a point. But Steven Gerrard had other ideas. He won the controversial free kick and then he converted it in some style. A truly wonderful goal to win it for Liverpool, who are often running their 1,000th point at this level. Winners today by two goals to one. Well, what a climax to that game. Fantastic stuff. Villa thinking they'd rescued it, but how on earth did Steven Gerrard get that free kick up and down so quickly? Terrific stuff. A little bit tasty at times as well. Uh, Jermaine Pennant was maybe lucky to stay on after that reaction with Baumer. Four yellow cards for Villa and just the two for Liverpool. And as you can see, the possession, Villa ended up just uh, edging that. But Liverpool was so much more convincing in the final third of their opponent's half. Really good start to the season for them. So let's look back at the match highlights then. It's good, vibrant stuff. Sense that Liverpool haven't yet quite clicked into top gear. And this was the opening goal. An own goal from Larson. Uh, 
Well, the congratulations for Dirk Cat. It was his perseverance that made the goal. And then good work from John Carew. He pushed forward all afternoon, Nigel Rio Coca. That was his effort. Slicing just wide. a wonderful save from Taylor. Liverpool's movement at times frightening. And then the introduction of Ryan Barbel. This is a sign of things to come. What a debut that would have been. Marco van Basten says he's the next Thierry Henry. Might just be right, you know. Although Henry would have scored. But then that lifeline for Aston Villa. No argument. Touched on and the hand of Jamie Carragher. Gave Gareth Barry the chance, and he rarely misses. Six converted penalties last season. One on the opening day, this. So surely it would finish 1-1 right. Not if you're Steven Gerrard. It's not only the ability, it's the ability to pick the moment as well. Scores so many important goals, and he's done it again on the first day of the season. Oh. Trip to the Midlands worth it for those Liverpool fans. All thanks to their man, Stevie G. Steven Gerrard's stats, the goal and four shots on target. Stunning performance that from Steven Gerrard for Liverpool. Hyundai. Drive your way.